One of the most common questions about ulcerative colitis is whether or not exercise is helpful or hurtful. Based on my experience and the research I've been able to dig up, I think exercise goes a long way towards helping to heal ulcerative colitis and other forms of IBD. Now, it is important to remember I'm not the be-all, end-all authority on this, I'm not a doctor, and my answer is based entirely upon my own healing experience and the limited amount of research articles I've been able to dig up on this subject. It is common knowledge that regular exercise and resistance training in healthy individuals improves mood, cognitive function, reduces risk of different diseases, especially cardiovascular, improves sleep, regulates bowel movements, etc. And yet, there seems to be a school of thought that exercise during the healing phase prevents or prolongs the healing process because exercise uses up too much energy and there isn't enough left for the body to heal. That is wrong, and here's why. First off, the idea that exercise fatigues the body so much that it can't heal is wrong because exercise increases energy and reduces fatigue, even among individuals with chronic health and autoimmune conditions. Okay, but I have IBD and am constantly fatigued and energy drained all day. Wouldn't exercise deplete all the energy I have left, leaving my body with less energy to use to heal? Research totally refutes this idea. A specific study from the University of Georgia studied the effects of exercise on a range of people varying from healthy individuals to cancer patients to those with chronic health conditions. The results? Exercise increased energy and reduced fatigue in nearly every group. The author of the study acknowledges that it may seem counterintuitive that expending energy through exercise would increase feelings of energy and reduce fatigue, but he points out that other studies show marked increases in the levels of energy-promoting and mood-enhancing neurotransmitters such as dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin in the brains of animals, and glutamate and GABA in the brains of humans after exercise. Where the mind goes, the body will follow. Here is where it gets interesting. The body follows this increase of mental energy via the lymphatic system. In simple terms, the lymphatic system is the platform for the immune system. Lymphatic vessels are responsible for transporting toxins to lymph nodes where an immune response is initiated in response to infection or disease from the toxins. How does this relate to IBD? One of the most consistent features observed in individuals suffering from Crohn's disease is extensive dilation of lacteals. Lacteals are lymphatic vessels in the villi of the small intestine that absorb digested fat. Extensive dilation of lacteals suggests poor lymph node drainage or lymphatic obstruction. Poor lymph drainage or obstruction is involved in the development of lymphoid aggregates, a recurrent feature in Crohn's disease and most chronic inflammatory diseases. Lymphoid aggregates are basically little lymphoid buildups of immune cells that accumulate and are trapped at the site of inflammation due to not being able to reach a draining lymph node, which therefore maintains the inflammation. One of the most consistent features in inflammatory bowel disease is a dysfunctional lymphatic system, which is not surprising because a dysfunctional lymphatic system impairs immune cell trafficking to lymph nodes, which causes an inappropriate immune response and persistent inflammation. Sound familiar? What's the solution? Exercise. During steady state exercise in humans, lymph flow has been shown to increase to levels approximately two to three fold higher than at rest. Exercise increases the efficiency of the lymphatic system helping to reverse poor lymph drainage or obstruction and allowing a functional trafficking of immune cells to lymph nodes. This helps inflammation to be released and a normal immune response to occur. More research indicates that exercise in general helps improve the health status of patients with IBDs in several areas, including gains of nutrition, a reduction of disease activity, an enhanced mood state, and an improvement of body composition with a countering of fatigue, poor physical performance, and bone mineral loss. The conclusion to be drawn here is that exercise does not, in fact, fatigue the body to the point that it cannot heal. Rather, moderate exercise, both aerobic and resistance, improves functional capacity and the quality of life, and it can be undertaken safely in chronic inflammatory bowel disease without increasing activity of the disease process or causing adverse changes in endocrine and immune function, and that programs of moderate exercise should thus become an integral component in the treatment of IBD. I think resistance training, specifically lifting, and sprints are the most beneficial types of exercises, and that is exactly what I did during my healing process. Now understand, exercise alone will not reverse colitis or Crohn's. I believe that has to be done through optimization of the gut microbiome. However, exercise can help expedite the process by increasing mental and physical energy and improving lymph flow, which improves immune function and helps dissipate inflammation. Those are tough things for the body to be able to do without exercise, but let's use a little common sense here. If you are so sick that you're bedridden and you literally do not have the energy or strength to get out of bed and you're having 20 plus bowel movements a day, then no, you probably should not be exercising. As soon as I was released from the hospital in 2014 and was able to walk under my own power without assistance, I went back to the gym and started lifting. 
This was definitely way too soon because I was still extremely weak and ended up face planting in front of everyone because of it. Point being, don't do what I did. If you are clearly in no condition to be exercising or feel like you shouldn't be exercising, then don't do it because it can be dangerous. But in my experience and the presented research, once your condition stabilizes, exercise paired with a gut microbiome optimization protocol helps expedite the healing process of ulcerative colitis and other forms of inflammatory bowel disease.